All right. Uh, okay. Enth equilibrium. You want minimum enthalpy, energy, maximum entropy, which is randomness. Okay. Uh, then we looked at Le Chatelier's principle. Let's create a reaction here. So we'll take hydrogen gas. We'll mix it with iodine. And we get two HI gas plus 92 kilojoules. All right. We're going to actually do something similar to that question we just looked at in the provincial exam. This is concentration. This is H2. This is... I2, and this will be HI. All right, so they're all just floating along, and then what do we do? We will add H2. So we inject some H2 in the system. What happens? H2 spikes up and then goes back down. Does it ever go to the original? No. No, so then it comes back down. And equilibria, it reaches equilibrium again. What happens to I2? Yeah, it decreases because the equilibrium shifts to the right. And HI increases. All right. Then what are we going to do here? Let's two will increase temp. So we add a bunch of heat. We heat up the reaction. What happens? What does the equilibrium, what does the reaction do? Which way does it go? It's going to shift to the left because we're in an exothermic reaction and we have energy on this side. So we add energy in, it pushes it back the other way. But like we just discussed, we don't get spikes, we just get curves, right? So H2 increases, I2 increases. And HI decreases. <clears throat> then what? Then we will change the volume on the last one. What do you want to do? Let's increase the volume. Is it going to shift? Is there going to be a, something's going to happen. Well, okay. All the concentrations are going to drop, right? The equilibrium won't shift, right? Because it's two gas molecules, two gas molecules, but this is concentration. So if you increase the volume, the concentrations are all going to drop. It should be... That's really bad, but we kind of see the point. Okay. Uh, okay. Is that okay? Does that make sense? Remember KEQ or, or sorry, uh, equilibrium shifts left and right, Le Chatelier's principle. Um, there's one thing we didn't talk about too much when we were doing it, but we can talk about it now. If I had... Calcium hydroxide, dissolve it in water, and 
Okay, I get that reaction. It's just an ionic compound that ionizes in water. You have these OH minuses floating around. If I add an acid, did we? But we, went, we didn't really know what acids and bases were at the time, so I don't think I went into it in much detail. But say we add an acid, which I'm going to represent as H+. Plus. What's that going to do? There you go. That base will react with the acid that we add to form water, which essentially removes the OH from the equation. Therefore, the reaction shifts, right? So that's something to keep in mind. If you have an, uh, a base that ionizes, if you add an acid, it's going to pull that out of re the reaction and pull the equilibrium to the right. Conversely, if, you, if this was an acid and you added a base, it would do the same thing. It would react, pull it, and pull it to the right. So if you add a base to that, you're going to shift to the left? Yeah, because you're, if, you, like, if you added NaOH, you're increasing the amount of this, which is going to push it back that way. Is that okay? All right. KEQ. So then this is what this the beginning of our K's. KEQ, KSP, KA, KB. So KEQ. It's concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants. What do we not include? Exactly. <clears throat> so we don't include solids and liquids. Um, if the KEQ is greater than one, and if it's less than one, the reactants are favored. Which makes sense if you have more products than reactants, then the ratio is going to be bigger than one, so that means you have the products are favored. If you have more reactants than products, the ratio will be less than one, which is an indication that the reactants are favored. Is that good? Okay. All right. Then we went into the math. Everybody's favorite. So, if we have... Two molecules of ammonia. There's our reaction. We place You just want even numbers? Yeah. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so the overall reaction that we look at is two moles of ammonium, or ammonia, sorry, breaks down into two nitrogen, or a nitrogen molecule and two and three hydrogen molecules, plus 120 kilojoules. 
that's equilibrium. That's what it is at when we reach equilibrium. So if we throw eight moles 20 of ammonia, 20 moles of nitrogen and 36 moles of H2 in a two liter flask, which way is the equilibrium going to go? So this is a KEQ trial question, all right? So what is the equilibrium expression for this reaction? There you go. So, Kate. KEQ, there we go, is equal to the concentration of N2. And I didn't put the, these are all gases, but if they were solids and liquids, we wouldn't, wouldn't include them. Um, H2 cubed over the concentration of ammonia squared. What's the only thing you need to remember in this that Noah pointed it out? It's concentrations, right? The volume of the flask is two, which is moles per liter. So you have to divide all these numbers by two. So N2 has a concentration of 10. Do I need to put the units? Does, does a KEQ have units? No, it does not. So you can put the units if you want, but you don't really need them because they all we kind of just pretend they go away. Uh, H2 is going to be... So 36 divided by 2 is 18. We're cubing it. And 8 divided by 2 is 4. And it's squared. And if you do that, you should get 33496. These are old notes, so I don't know if that's right. I just. <clears throat> okay. Oh, you know what other piece of information I was supposed to give you that you need to answer this question? Go ahead. I think you're right. I didn't have to tell you the KEQ, right? So this is the KEQ trial of the specific. So this is KEQ trial. We compare that to the actual KEQ, which... We'll say is, I'll just write beside it, KEQ is equal to, I don't know, 100. So, did I get right? Now I got to do the math. Do I just accept that I just got it right? Well, I mean, I mean, they're both greater than yeah. 18 to the power of 3 equals that times 10 equals that divided by 16 equals 3645. I don't know how I got. I'm off by like 300. I don't know what. Okay. 3645. There we go. I mean, you're right. It doesn't really matter. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so products are favored. So our KEQ trial is 3,645. We compare that to the actual KEQ, which is supposed to be 100. So products still favored, just not to the extent that we have here. 35 times, 36 times it is. So which way is the equilibrium have to shift to reach the actual stable state? Left. Has to go left. That so. makes sense because I know. Most of these questions, like, if you think that's a what that's a way to check your math, right? I forgot how to do this. So therefore KEQ trial is greater than KEQ. So reaction shifts left. Right. Can I do we have it? Can I move? I'll go slow. And then we get into the sort of ice table stuff. Everybody's favorite.
If I give you a reaction, what's the first thing you have to check in that reaction? You have to have a balanced reaction. Okay. If it's sorry, are you going to try to predict it? I don't think so. But sometimes you have to write the reaction, right? So just make sure you have a balanced reaction. Otherwise, it's useless to you, basically. Are you going to give us something where it's the original word reaction? I have to look at the tests. I'll, I'll give you the more specific breakdown on Monday. Okay? <clears throat> but just make sure you have a balanced reaction. All right. So I give you a reaction. I say we place, what do we place? 0 0.2 molar H2 and I2 into the container. And I say... What is the concentration of HI at equilibrium? Does that mean you said you could point 0.2 molar H2 and 0.2? Yes, both. Both are 0.2. And I tell you the KEQ of this reaction is 55.6. Okay. So we just throw it into into a container, we seal it up, the reaction is going to happen, how much HI is there going to be if the KEQ is 55.6. So it's an ice table, okay? Initially, we have 0 0.2 molar of each of these. And you have zero HI. There's like that initial, we pretend that it's frozen in time. Then the reaction happens, okay? What happens to H2? It decreases by X. It loses X amount, minus X. I2, X amount. What about HI? It goes up 2X. So the final concentrations are 0 0.2 minus X, or at equilibrium, 0 0.2 minus X, and then this is 2X. So KEQ, you write out the KEQ expression. And then you just plug in your numbers. Can I just put 0 0.2 minus x all squared on the bottom? Does everybody understand that's okay? Because they're the same thing. I could write it out twice, but at equilibrium, they have the same amount. So it would be 0 0.2, 0.2 minus x or 0.2 minus x, which is 0.2x all squared. What do we do, peoples? All squared. Yeah, thanks. How do we do that? Yeah, square root both sides, because yeah, these square roots, we don't. We don't want any of those. So you're going to root both sides. Square root of 55.6. Now I'm scared of all the numbers that I have written down. What's the square root of 55.6? All right. 7.46 is equal to these, these uh, squares will all go away. And we get 2x over 0.2 minus x. And then, sorry. I probably have. I probably have. Um, and then it's just algebra. Multiply that up. Get all your x's to one side. You should get x is equal to 0 0.16. Is that our answer? 10 minutes. You're going to do that if you get a, a quadratic. I'll show it. That's in assets and bases. We did that. So you don't have to worry about that right now. Uh, is that our answer? That's not our answer. 
Why is it not our answer? Because the concentration of HI is two times that. So that's the, the that's where people will go wrong. They'll forget that last step. Okay. So concentration of HI equals 2x, so 2 times 0 0.16, 0 0.32 more. Boom. All right. Um, okay, two more examples, and then we're done. Huh? So fast or bad? Fast. This part? Yeah. It's because I have the answer written down here. Oh, <laughs> do you want me to do it? Okay, let's do the algebra, people. No, hey, based on my math that I ha have written down, there's a 65% chance I got this wrong. Whoa. Okay, so I multiply the point 2 minus x up. Correct? Yeah? Multiply that in. What's 7.46 times 0.2? Minus 7.46x equals 2x. 1.49. Add that over. I'm going to get 9.46x. Did I do it real bad? Divide it off, and you get 0.16. That's what I got. Okay. What's the only thing that changes your equilibrium? Sorry? Temperature. the only only thing um last question Sodium bicarbonate plus heat breaks down into sodium carbonate plus CO2 plus water. Does this go to completion? Not at all. Or is it in equilibrium? And tell me why. Okay, so enthalpy, so energy, delta H, is favoring what side? Yeah, because it's positive, so it's endothermic. Therefore, the reactants are favored. But delta S favors... Because it's positive, reading it that way, right? Mm -hmm. Delta S goes up because gas molecules are more random. There's more molecules on that side, blah, 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 all that fun stuff. Delta S favors, uh, just therefore, favors products. So you get competing, right? You've got delta S is pushing this way. Delta H is pushing that way. 
If they're pushing against each other, you go to equilibrium. If they're pushing in the same direction, if they both push this way, you go to completion. If they both push that way, you get no reaction happening. Does that make sense? That's pretty much equilibrium, people. You have a 64-page document in the classroom that you could do. Yeah, but they're all multiple choice. You can just like pull it up and be like, and then check your answers. You don't have to print it. I would print, how about this? What if I pick a provincial exam to print for everybody? Just one, only one. One full provincial exam. Okay, that's the only thing I'm going to print for this class though. Okay? I know. You can thank me later. <laughs>